Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Pip-Boy 3000 from Fallout. For this build, you'll need EVA foam, white glue, hot glue, paint, a tap light, a marker, a respirator mask, goggles, sponge brushes, a rotary tool, scissors, razor pens, or a box cutter. For people who don't play Fallout, this is an arm-mounted tactical computer, kind of like Leela's arm scanner from Futurama. Stands for Personal Information Processor. First, you have to make the base to build onto. Okay, now the measurements that I'm using for this are an amalgamation of internet references and what will fit on my arm comfortably and, and looks right. So take these measurements with a grain of salt. Also, sorry if you use metric, I, I, I just, I'm not gonna use metric. I, alone. So first you're essentially just making two concentric rings and a spacer to hold them together. Once you've got that core, make sure it fits before you proceed because you know, if you mess up here then you're boned. Now make all the details. I'm trying to use a cutting mat or a ruler in like every shot. I have a lot of non-English speaking subscribers who have no idea what the f I'm saying. Once you've cut this strip, use the rotary tool to shape one edge of it to be rounded and glue it in place. The glue gun was across the room when I shot this, which is why I had to walk into the shot like that. The cord didn't reach. I cut a piece of cable to use that little lip detail around the wrist. I put an aerosol can inside this thing while I'm working on it to help it retain its shape. I cut this strip of foam 15 by 2 inches to go around the wider base of the pit boy. Glue it on. Yeah, so from this point on, you're just going to be cutting and gluing detail pieces out of EVA foam. So let's time lapse it up! This is normally the part where I'd like play the Benny Hill theme, but I really don't want to deal with copywritten music. It's kind of the same reason why you hear a lot of the same music in my tutorials all the time. So in order to paint this properly, you have to seal in at least five layers of white glue slash water. It's a mixture of 50% or plastic dip. That's a good sealant, but glue and water is cheaper. While working on certain details, I'd coat finished areas in glue because they need more layers for one reason or another. So like some areas are only getting five layers, but some with a lot of cracks in them got like 30 layers of glue. If you want more clarification on this glue process, you can check out the flamethrower tutorial. There's a link at the end or right here. I really go into a lot more depth than that one. Okay, I make this crazy Tetris block looking thing and glue it in place. It'll eventually be the bottom of the computer box. Yep, now just keep building up that structure. I don't really have anything new to say about this for a while, but I need these shots on screen long enough for you to get the measurements. So uh, yeah, just, uh, just gonna chill and talk about current events. Man, what's going on in the world? Oh, we sent a space probe to Pluto. It's nuts, huh? It's been traveling so long that when it launched, Pluto was still a planet. Yeah, orbital dynamics. Oh, hey, so this is a much better setup, right? I think I'll build props like this from now on, unless it's something crazy huge that won't fit in the shot. I don't know if you noticed, but that side panel was crooked. It was kind of diagonal, elongated at one end, if you will. So I had to go back in and cut out a sliver with the box cutter and then re-glue it. Oh, this is a fun montage. Check it out. Ah, wasn't that awesome? Almost like stop motion. And back to nothing to say. I was trying to watch the fog while making these detail parts. I just couldn't do it. Normally when a horror movie is bad, I just laugh at them, but Jesus Christ, the fog was bad. Oh, it was, it was the remake, by the way, not, not the original. I actually kind of see the original because uh, John Carpenter. It's kind of my hero. I'm cutting all these pieces with a box cutter, which is how you get those nice clean angled cuts, but theoretically you could use scissors. So these rivets that I'm using were all actually individually pulled out of the pearls in Betty Henderson's necklace while I was making that prop for my somewhat fallout related mini nuke test film. Normally I'd use my rotary tool to make these grooves, but this time I decided to use the box cutter and pliers. The pit boy is supposed to be hinged and open up like a clamshell, but that would have taken longer, so I made it a closed cylinder and added this phony hinge cut from a sponge brush handle. I cannibalized a tap light, removed some of the LEDs, and inserted it into the CRT box, along with some aluminum for reflectivity, and a hole inside the gauntlet so that I could reach the switch. Now attach the screen. In order from bottom layer to top layer, it consists of green plastic, tissue paper, a printout of the graphic on regular printer paper, another layer of green plastic, and then finally the EVA foam sun guard cowling thing. I just add some more details. Now I'm working on the Geiger counter. Here's the knob. I really wanted to use a fluted guitar amplifier knob like I did in the Farnsworth tutorial, but none of the guitar stores around here sold individual parts. Really frustrating. Here's the base of the knob. While working on this, I've been coating other layers in white glue. Again, for time, I decided to make the buttons as unmoving, unlit, solid buttons. But if you want to be more accurate and you have the time, then by all means, light them up. Now that these parts are sealed in five layers of glue, I could paint them. I add a small bit of transparent plastic 
plastic to the back of the silver part. Then I drew the Geiger counter dial. When the glue was finally dry, I gave the whole thing a base coat of green. When the paint was dry, I cut out the Geiger counter dial, glued it in place, and then attached the faceplate. I also attached the knob, as well as machine screws. Then I weathered the whole thing by dry brushing silver and black paint over all the edges and corners. My stomach just growled. Did you guys hear that? Did it pick that up? And that's how you make the Pip-Boy 3000. I know this is supposed to be a hand controller, but I, I, I didn't have time to make that right now. Maybe I'll make that in the coming weeks. It's pretty simple. I don't know, maybe I'll do a mini DIY. I wish I had my blue jumpsuit with me to make into a vault suit. But I left it back in New York. Wait, there's an army surplus store on Granville. Sweet. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then you can subscribe and click send me updates to find out about new tutorials. I try to do one a week. You can also help out the channel by visiting my Patreon page. Right now, the proceeds for that are going towards a Harley Quinn themed test film for some other props that I recently built. You can see those and other tutorials right here. I want to do a test film for the Pip Boy, but right now I don't have a clear story in mind. There's a bunch of cool visuals, so that one will have to wait a while until I can, you know, figure out what to do with it. Okay, that's that's everything. Thanks for watching. Jake out.